Number one tells us that three drivers competed in the same 15 drag races and then were given the mean and standard deviation for their race times. So for driver A, it tells us that their um, mean race time is 4.01 and their standard deviation is 0.05. Driver B, it's 3.96 for their mean with a standard deviation of 0.12. And then driver C is 3.99 seconds for the mean and then a standard deviation of 0.19. So then this question goes on to ask us which driver had the fastest typical race time. So when you're talking about typical race time, you want to be looking at a measure of center, in this case the mean. So for this one, um, driver B has the fastest typical time at 3.96 seconds, so just under four seconds. Then part B asks, which driver's race times were the most variable? So now you're looking at a, um, a center of variability, or not a center, a measure of variability. So in this case, the standard deviation. And so in this case, the most variable would be the highest number. So that's going to be driver C with a 0.19 um, standard deviation. Then part C gets into asking us, who do we think is going to win the next drag race? And then they just want us to support our answer. So I want you to understand that the answer to this question is ambiguous, meaning there isn't one correct answer here, right? It's your prediction of who will win. So you want to look at this data and make a prediction and then just support your answer. So there's like I could come up with reasons for probably justifying my choice for any of these drivers, right? Because they're all within 0.05 seconds of each other and their variability changes that right so if driver a was kind of at the low end or the slow end of what they drove they'd be at like 4.06 seconds if we just added this and if we subtracted this from here they'd be at their fast end which is 3.96 and 3.96 is driver b's average time so their typical time is driver b's typical time is the same speed as driver a However, driver B has more variability, right? So if they have a bad race, they could be all the way up to three point, or sorry, 4.08 seconds, right? So, um, and same with driver C. If they're on the fast end of theirs, if you subtracted this, they could go 3.8 seconds and pretty fast. So you just want to use this information to justify what it is. So for me, I'm going to say um, that I think driver A will win. But I think I predict that driver A will win because their um, average time was slowest, but they most consistency. So I'm pretty confident they will still race at about um, four seconds. So in this case, 4.01, right? Where driver B and C were typically faster, but have a lot of variability. So in my opinion, it seems more likely to me that driver B and C have the potential for a bad race. So again, this is just my opinion. Yours could be different, right? Like you could be like, well, driver B typically is the fastest, so I think they're going to win. And they're like absolute fastest score or race time would be down around 3.84 if you took this standard deviation and subtracted it off of here. So there's good justification for driver B. And like I said, there's good justification for driver C. Their fastest 
races are at 3.8 seconds if you subtract the standard deviation from here. So the idea here is just that you make a prediction and you support your prediction with the evidence um, of the typical race time and the deviation. Number two, the widths in millimeters of fabric produced at a ribbon factory are, are collected. The mean is approximately um, 23 millimeters. And the standard deviation is approximately 0.06. So interpret what this um, means in the context of the problem. So the fabric um, produced is typically 23 millimeters thick, right? Or width, the width is 23 millimeters. Um, and there isn't a lot of variability. since that standard deviation is only 0.06 meters. Um, so there isn't a lot of variability. Most of the fabric produced is between, now I'm gonna add and subtract this standard deviation from the mean. So 23 minus 0.06 is 22.94. So between 22.94 and then 23.06 millimeters. So very, very close to 23 is where most of the fabric produced will be. All right, then number three says, select all statements that are true about the standard deviation. So it's a measure of center is false. It's a measure of variability is true. It is not the same as the MAD. It is calculated using the mean or it's calculated using the median. And if you forgot this, you could always look back at your lesson summary and see if it tells us in here. So if we look through these paragraphs, um, if you get to this bottom paragraph here, it says the standard deviation is calculated using the mean. So it tells us the answer to that in our summary. So it is calculated using the mean, not the median. Number four, the number of different species of plants in a garden is recorded. We're looking for the mean and the standard deviation. So the mean is pretty easy, right? We'll just add up all these numbers and divide by 10. So the total of these is 45. There are 10 numbers. So the mean is 4.5. The standard deviation, we're going to want some technology for this. So I'll show you again on GeoGebra how to do this. I'm also going to show you on a graphing calculator. So for GeoGebra, you click these tool button, this, this button in the upper right-hand corner with the triangle and the circle. Then you click the three little dots and go to spreadsheet so that you can type in your data here. So the data for this was one, two, three, four, four, five, five, six, seven, eight. And we highlight that data and we click this um, kind of bar graph looking thing over here and click one variable analysis. Now this is gonna give you a histogram, but if you click this little button here that looks like a big EX, it's really a, the Greek letter sigma, then it'll give you your statistics here and you can find your standard deviation by the lowercase sigma, this 2.06. So that's how you would do it using a web-based tool. If you have a graphing calculator, um, you would click stat and then we're gonna edit our list. So select number one. If you have anything in here, you wanna go arrow up to the L1 and you want to hit clear. Don't hit delete because it'll delete the whole list, but hit clear so that it clears out that data. Then you'll move down and you'll see the data will disappear. Move over, click up, clear out the list, arrow down. So then we're going to type in our data again. So one, two, three, four, four, five, five, six, seven, and eight. It looks like I have a an extra entry 
No, I don't. Okay, so that's 10 entries. So if you look here, it tells you how many entries are in your list. So I have 10 entries. So then you're going to go over to, you're going to click stat again. And this time you're going to go over to the calculate menu. And you're going to calculate the one variable um, stats here. And then you might just push enter. Otherwise, you can push enter a bunch of times, get down to this calculate and hit enter. Then you'll see um, this number at the bottom here with this little lowercase sigma x. That's your standard deviation. And your mean is this top one that has this x with the bar over it. So in stats, they call that x bar, but that's for the mean. So our mean is 4.5. Our standard deviation is 2.06. So that's two different ways that you can calculate each of those depending on what you have access to. Number five, a set of data has 10 numbers. The mean of the data is 12 and the standard deviation is zero. What could make up the data set with these statistics? Well, if there's no variation in the data, then the data has to be equal to the mean. So that would mean we'd have all 12s. So you'd have um, 10 12s. Number six, which plot has the largest interquartile range? And remember the interquartile range is the difference between Q1 and Q3. So really what this is asking for is what has the widest box or the widest middle part, right? And you could certainly subtract these. So you could look and see that this one's at 12 and this one's at five and you could subtract those to get seven, but we're looking for the widest distance. And you can pretty easily tell that the widest distance here is D. So this is the widest distance. Again, subtract them all if you want to figure out the actual interquartile range and compare them. Number seven, what's the five number summary for this? So our minimum is one. Then we're going to be looking for our Q1 our median, our Q3, and our maximum is 17. So there's 10 numbers in this set. So we'll count to five, and then that's where the median is going to be, is right in between the fifth and sixth value. And so the middle of four and eight is six. You can also calculate that by doing four plus eight, which is 12, and then dividing by two. Q1 is going to be the middle of this bottom set of data, so this 3. Q3 is going to be the middle of the top set of data, so that 10. Then it asks us to remove the 17 from the data, and what does that do to the five number summary? So now when we remove that top piece, it's going to shift everything down one because we have one less data point and we removed the top one, right? So now the maximum is at 10. The minimum stays the same. But now our bottom half of our data shifts to be both of these. And then the median is here at four. And then this upper quartile shifts to be the average of the nine and 10. So our Q1 is now three, because three plus three is six divided by two. Our median is now four. And our Q1 is the average of nine and 10, or the middle of nine and 10, which is 9.5. You can also just look at it and redraw the data if thinking about it shifting down one feels like too much of a leap. So you could just draw out the nine um, did I miss one? One, three, three. Oh, one of the threes is missing. Um, you could draw out the nine data points and do it that way so that you can get to the actual middle here of four. And then you're looking at just the middle of these, which is going to be here, averaging that and the middle of this top half averaging that. So if you need to rewrite it, you certainly can.